So here we have the inaugural Bible of Abraham Lincoln. They call this the Lincoln Bible. It looks like it's held up pretty well. It is. It's in, it's in, I would say, tolerably good condition. In good condition, but it's not really the Lincoln Family Bible. With the Civil War about to erupt and an assassination threat in Baltimore, Lincoln slipped into Washington in the middle of the night. His belongings and his Bible were still en route. So Abraham Lincoln shows up for his first inauguration. Yes. He doesn't have a Bible, and the Chief Justice is there to swear him in. Sends his clerk to get one? A, a very like, that's a very likely scenario for what happened. And this is what he brings back. This is what he brings back. The clerk of the Supreme Court, William Thomas Carroll, brought back one of the many Bibles he kept for official use, then signed and sealed it. On that day, Lincoln spoke to a nation in crisis, about to split in two. As Lincoln said, to a nation far more divided than ours. And on election night, Obama echoed Lincoln's words. We are not enemies, but friends. Though passion may have strained, it must not break our bonds of affection. For inspiration tomorrow, Obama has been reading Lincoln's second inaugural address. Changing words, even to the very end. He's a wordsmith. Shown to us by John Sellers of the Library of Congress. The final paragraph is, is really one of the most moving things he's ever written. With malice toward none, with charity for all. In Abraham Lincoln's rise from nothing and in his determination, Barack Obama sees a model to inspire, to guide, and to unite. Bill Plant, CBS News, the White House.